Turning to one of our top stories, Foreign Minister Penny Wong has met the families of Israelis being held hostage by Hamas on the second day of her Middle East tour. Joining me now is Michael Shoebridge, founder and director of Strategic Analysis Australia. Thanks for your time. Look, a lot's been spoken about this visit, where she is and where she isn't going, but the overall approach she has here around the region, uh, what do you make of it uh, in terms of what it says about Australia's priorities? Well, I think a lot of this visit, Tom, is, a, is about the domestic agenda and domestic conversation back here, you know, this tightrope that the Australian government's trying to walk between pro-Palestinian people that tend to be reasonably pro-Hamas and pro-Israeli people who are horrified by the murderous attacks of the 7th of October. But beyond that, her agenda is to talk about a ceasefire and about peace, to say what Israel does matters, but to me it's missing the point. It's been overtaken by events because Iran is the actor behind much of this violence and we're seeing Iran broaden the conflict. It's put missiles into Syria, missiles into Pakistan. It's been caught red-handed supplying missiles to the Houthis. And Iran is nowhere in Minister Wong's talking points or agenda. What would the aim be or what should the aim be if that were more the focus? Because, you know, we haven't even mentioned Hezbollah as well. So I guess while a lot of people are saying let's avoid escalation, has escalated and because there's such a big focus, understandably, on Gaza, in particular the civilians there, all these other acts, which would normally be sort of top-line issues, right, these missiles being spread around, are sort of not getting the normal attention. Well, exactly. And really the, Iran the Iranians are getting away with all of this cost-free. Uh, the real actor that needs costs imposed on it is Tehran because they're the ones that can put the rain on Hezbollah and Hamas and the Houthis. So if we want peace, there needs to be pressure on Tehran. How much of that... I mean, generally it comes from the US. We know way back then was the nuclear non-proliferation deal. What would an option be for Joe Biden if, if that was his strategic view as well? I think we're starting to see that. The Navy SEALs that got hold of the Iranian missile supplies going to the Houthis, and tragically two of those SEALs are missing. But the Americans are showing they know they need to get into Iranian supply chains and Iranian personnel, uh, Revolutionary Guard people that are working in Yemen and Syria and in Lebanon. So the Americans are starting to impose costs on Tehran. But if we don't realise this is the bigger picture, then visits like the foreign ministers just mm. look like irrelevant hand-waving. Is, is it, even though perhaps some of the more significant moves are some of those missiles being placed right around the region, is it maybe these ship strikes that have become the reason to go actually, you know, at this point, striking civilian ships like this. This is the thing that maybe Iran could even regret because it's the thing that is making the US sit up and take notice. Well, this is the thing that broadens the conflict and stops it just being about Hamas and Israel. Mm. This is affecting all of us. It's probably going to affect petrol prices. But it's nowhere in the government's agenda. So Iran needs to become a central topic of focus here. OK. And without that, the conflict will keep escalating. It ticked over to 100 days at the start of this week. How clear do you think Israel's aim remains and how achievable? I think their aim has become clearer as they've gone deeper into Gaza. The realisation that some of the Hamas tunnels are seven storeys deep, uh, there's hundreds of kilometres, some of them you can drive um, cars down, Destroying that underground infrastructure is an essential goal. And that's not going to take a couple more weeks. That's going to take months and it's going to lead to a whole lengthening of the conflict. So even though the tunnels are always spoken about as crucial, the initial talk of sort of destroy military capability became, you know, whack-a-mole, you um, manage to assassinate one leader, another comes up. It's the tunnels that have assumed more significance in your view? The tunnels enable Hamas to conduct war against Israel. And while the tunnels are there, they can manufacture and mm. stockpile missiles and they can pop up and attack Israelis. And that Israel cannot have the 7th of October situation happen again. Mm. And how do they manage that while allowing something approaching civilian life for people in Gaza? It's pretty bleak there. Probably more casualties now than people would have envisaged at the start. What do they need to do about that? Well, they're going to have to let the Palestinians out of the increasingly small pocket that they've been pushed into and back into some of the areas that they've cleared. 
because the tunnel infrastructure around Khan Yunus, where the, where the Israelis are operating now, is extensive and deep. There's a lot more work to be done to destroy that. So, yeah. so as you get each tunnel region, you have to allow civilian life to return there because when they're getting pushed into this pocket. It's just not sustainable. Mm. And that, that means clearing Hamas and destroying tunnel infrastructure and then letting the Palestinians back into those cleared areas. Michael Shoebridge, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.